We're live out of New York. It's cold, it's snowing, and I'm just glad you didn't have travel delays getting in from Dallas. Oh my gosh, you know. <laughs> thank you so much for saying that because I was on the road this weekend uh, with, with uh, my bestie Kim Whitley for our Two Funny Mama show in Dallas. And um, we did our whole variety show at the Majestic Theater and the shows were absolutely incredible. And I have to say, thank you and thank you. So much to everybody who came out to see our show. I gotta tell you, John, I enjoyed Dallas so much. But you know what? It was nothing to eat out in Dallas but meat. <laughs> when I tell you, and I'm not complaining because I was in heaven. <laughs> Even at the hotels, their bacon melted in your mouth. I don't care, you can stop at the gas station. They had burnt in bacon. Ooh, it just melted in your mouth. <laughs> I don't know, and I didn't eat anything with it. I just ate bacon. <laughs> it was the most beautiful experience. I loved it. So I want to say a, a huge thank you to our affiliate in Dallas, KDFW, for promoting the heck out of the Two Funny Mama show. We so appreciate you. Oh, and I'm saying now, I was in Dallas, and it was so cold in Dallas this weekend, I was literally expecting to wear some shorts and a T-shirt, but the wet, I did, because it's Dallas, Texas. Um, but the weather was in the teens in Dallas, and I kept saying, it's colder here in Dallas than it is in New York. Then I landed in New York, and I said, <laughs> I literally, I said, I should've stayed my butt in Dallas. <laughs> It is cold everywhere out here. It is 125 million Americans are under wind chill alert. It was so cold this weekend that people are, are on TikTok and they are freezing ramen noodles in <laughs> midair. Take a look. Really, really, look at that steam. Cold in Michigan. And I'm trying the freeze the noodle thing. Holy cold. Look at that steam. Look at this. It's, it's frozen ramen. We did it in the frozen land of Michigan. We have created an art piece. That is the craziest thing I have ever seen. You, do you snow it in and got that much time to stand out there and let the ramen freeze? It be, and people are doing it with, with blue jeans. They're sending the blue jeans up out there and those are freezing. I'm telling you, it was so cold this weekend that fans of the Buffalo Bills had to dig their way to their seats yesterday. Look at this. It snowed three feet in Buffalo. The field was shoveled, but the stands weren't cleared out. But the fans, you're not gonna stop no Buffalo Bills fans. <laughs> when I tell you, they shoveled their way into it. And, and look, y'all, I was gonna say black people don't do this, but this is not even a race thing. This is a Buffalo <laughs> thing. Because all 
all the Buffalo fans who shove, look at all of them down there shoveling their way out. You, you know, and I'm sitting here going, I'm just not that much of a football fan because you understand as they're going through the snow, your jeans are getting wet. They are frozen. You know how uncomfortable it is when your jeans are wet and sticking to you? And you gotta say, how long is a, is an NFL game? Uh, it's, like what, 12 my, hours? My, <laughs> With commercials and timeouts and stuff, about three hours, but I'm with you, Sherry. Ain't nothing in the world worth all of that to and me. Like, like, yeah, th you, three hours you sitting in cold, you know, in wet jeans. I, I felt like they, when it snows like that, they're supposed to go, we gonna go inside for this. Like, <laughs> the, the Buffalo, y'all ain't got a convention center that you can go to. <laughs> when I saw this, I said, they can't make the rooftop come open and... <laughs> Look, I said Beyonce, everywhere she went, she made a portable rooftop. Y'all can have a rooftop to go over so the snow won't get in there. I, I was so cold. It was so bad uh, that I went to exercise in the cold. I didn't even take off my clothes when I exercised. I went straight to the gym and kept on my sweatsuit and kept on my sweatpants. And I did, I did deadlifts and worked out and in, in the freezing cold. Um, I get, okay, all right. So this is, and I felt like when I was at the gym, working out in my sweatpants and um, my hat and, and sweatshirt, that God was saying to me, uh, you're not supposed to be working out in the wintertime. <laughs> I literally felt like, as I did everything, pull-ups and everything, I felt like God was saying, you're supposed to stay home and eat and store up your fat. <laughs> Because I feel like this, we have missed the mark on this. Do you realize we are going against the entire ecosystem by going out and working and doing everything we had to do in the winter? Bears know what to do. <laughs> Bears, they eat all in the summertime, and then they store up that fat, and then they sleep during the winter. Hibernation. Right now, we should all be in bed, sleep like the bears. <laughs> I'm telling you, we should all be able to call into work and just say, hey, the bear, it's my season. <laughs> oh my gosh, they don't go out working. Bears don't go out working out trying to build muscle. They eat, they store the fat, they go to sleep. This is why we're all cold. Oh, there we go. That's how I worked out. That is how I worked out too <laughs> in the thing because it was so cold, I didn't want to take off anything. So I just lifted weights. <laughs> all I could right. not do it. Oh my gosh. And I was just like, this is why we're all cold, because we're building, we're trying to build up all this muscle. We're looking at all these TikToks, building up muscle, lifting weight. No, 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 no. We got it all wrong. We're supposed to have a lot of fat around our body. <laughs> and I'm feeling like, I'm so cold, I want to know how much will it cost me to get my booze back, because I need... <laughs> Everything I need, you know, and you think when it's this cold, you in bed, uh, you know, when you single, this is the time when you be really wanting somebody. You in bed, I got my flannels on, I got that, you know, just in laying there shivering. I need somebody to keep me warm at night. That's, and I was thinking, this is when I really need Lenny Kravitz to be. <laughs> When I kept looking at Lenny Kravitz, I said, Lenny Kravitz, he ain't got no meat on him. He's too skinny. <laughs> so this is the only time I don't want Lenny Kravitz. I need a Jason Momoa. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> See, that's a, that's a lot of heat that's created, all right? <laughs> so, I, look, I stay warm with my fantasies. I really do. So everybody, y'all stay warm out there. Buckle up, put on some mittens and a hat, and just be warm. <laughs> <laughs> So, the 75th annual Emmy Awards were last night. Um, I love, I love the show. I think it was Jesse Collins Entertainment that did the show. He did a great job. Anthony Anderson hosted. He was fantastic as the host. Oh, Debonair. Look at him, Debonair. But for the 75th anniversary, they honored the, the history of television. And they reunited the cast of a lot of our favorite shows, including Cheers. I loved it. They had Cheers. They had um, Grey's Anatomy. Put out Grey's Anatomy. They had Allie McBeal. You remember Allie McBeal? And they had Martin. They had Martin. There was Allie McBeal, and then they put out Martin. I'm telling you, so it was uh, everybody from Martin. And everybody looks so amazing. And I got to give a shout out to my girlfriend, Tisha Campbell. You yeah. looked so, so 
stunning. Tisha Campbell was like, like a Jessica Rabbit kind of one. She had us all saying, damn, Gina! <laughs> so, uh, and it was really great, the Emmys this year, because a lot of television icons returned to the stage. They had Marla Gibbs, who was 92, oh. right there. And if y'all saw it last night, Marla Gibbs, look, and Marla Gibbs is giving full collarbone. I love it. <laughs> And she's how old is she? Marla Gibbs is... 92. 92 years old, looking yeah. good. But Marla Gibbs was talking to Quinta about the fact that she is still viable, she still can work, and she said, and if y'all would write something for me... I said, Marla, you ain't fooling nobody. Quinta, stop the foolishness and put her in as your grandmother into Abbott Elementary. I, I said, go ahead, shoot your shot, Marla. And Marla said, mm, mm I'm not auditioning. Offer only. You better go, girl. <laughs> I love Marla Gibbs. And Joan Collins, who is 90 years old. Look at this woman. I want to know what voodoo doctor Joan Collins is going to, because I want to go to the same doggone doctor. She, she, is, she looks like she just stepped off the set of Dynasty right there, Joan Collins. And then my comedy idol, Carol Burnett, 90 years old, was there. They're all very seasoned ladies, and they look so beautiful. And another person who won, I was so happy, Ali Wong. Ali Wong uh, learned her lesson about award shows really fast. Now, she won uh, a Golden Globe for her role in Beef. And when she won, it took her a long time to find her way to the stage. She looked like she was lost, couldn't figure out <laughs> where she was going. But after this week's Emmy win, Ali came prepared, OK? Ali was spotted leaving the event in her sneakers, all right? She wasn't playing around <laughs> this time. But at the uh, 75th Emmys, I tell you, last night, it was Black Girl Magic. Ayo Udebari won for The Bear. Uh, she won. Then, shout out to Miss Quinta Brunson. She won for lead actress in a comedy. Now, fun fact about this, the only other black woman to win this award was Isabel Sanford, a.k.a. Louise Jefferson, a.k.a. Wheezy. 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 Remember that? Wheezy who worked at the health center. <laughs> Now, the, she's the only other black woman that won, and she won back in 1981. So, Quinta, it's been over 40 years. And Quinta was like, when they called her name, like, if you watch it, Quinta didn't write a speech because she said she didn't think she was gonna win. She's sitting up there talking to her girlfriend, Cheryl Lee Ralph, and she heard her name. She was like, they're not talking about me. Anyway, <laughs> what, what? So she came up and she cried because it was it meant so much to her. But uh, I just have to say very very proudly the biggest winner of the night. Oh, and I want to give a shout out to uh, I want to give a shout out to um, to um, Elton John because he won. He got his uh, he got too Elton John. But the winner of the night was my best friend in the whole wide world, Nisi yeah. Nash. Best Supporting Actress in a Limited Series for Dahmer, and her speech brought the house down. Take a look. And you know who I want to thank? I want to thank me. <laughs> for believing in me and doing what they said I could not do. And I want to say to myself in front of all you beautiful people, go on, girl, with your bad self. <laughs> you did that. As an artist, my job is to speak truth to power. And baby, I'm gonna do it to the day I die. Mama, I won! And that's a, that was Niecy's mother, Mama Margaret, back down there. And backstage, Niecy wasn't done. She did a whole other Emmy speech when somebody in the press asked her why it was important for her to thank herself. Take a look. Well, because, you know, I'm the only one who knows what it cost me. I'm the only one who knows how many nights I cried because I w couldn't be seen for a certain type of role. I'm the one who knows what it's like to go through divorce on camera and still have to pull up and show out, and you still got to go home and you have children and a whole life. And so I'm proud of myself. I'm proud that I did something that people said I could not do because I believed in me. And sometimes people don't believe in themselves, and I hope my speech was a delicious invitation for people to do just that. 
believe in yourself and congratulate yourself. Sometimes you got to encourage what? Yourself. And that's why it's not called mama esteem, them esteem, us esteem. It's called self esteem because don't nobody got to believe it but you. Now y'all, <laughs> no, no, Nisi for over 30 years. Everybody's clapping, but I done heard this speech for the last 12 years. <laughs> Okay, every time you talk to Nisi, she in with, that's why it's not called mama esteem, them esteem, me esteem, it's called self esteem, cause you got to believe in yourself. And I said, I'm just trying to figure out if we're going to Chipotle or the Cheesecake Factory. <laughs> so I'm so glad Nisi got to share that with the world. And when she said in there, she said, I, be I said it uh, about myself, because only I know what I've been through. I'm screaming at the screen going, I know what you've been through too. <laughs> You called at three in the morning till five in the morning. I know. So it, so it was so wonderful. I was so happy my friend won because she has been through the ringer. And people, <laughs> like what, what people see, they always see the Nisi Nash, the smiling Nisi Nash. She's always dressed and she got her hair. But I, as her best friend, I know her struggle. And when you're, you know, one of the things that she has always struggled with is when you're a comedic actress or you're in comedy, people tend to put you in a box. And this is even outside of acting. Sometimes people put you in the box and they don't want to see you get to another place. And so nobody would see Niecy Nash for a drama. She auditioned and auditioned and they were like, no, she does comedy. So a big thing for Niecy is see me, look at me. And I am looking forward to the world seeing Niecy Nash Beds because she's opened herself up to a new level. It's no auditioning anymore. Now it's people coming to her going, I wrote this for you. So I. Oh my gosh. When I tell you, now she's in a special class and I'm so happy for her. But um, I, I'm happy for my best friend. But what I'm not happy about is, Nisi, now that you done done this, now if I win something, I got to come up with a good speech. <laughs> I gotta have writers to come up with something deep for me, cause you got so deep. How can I talk? I'm gonna speak the truth to power and I'm gonna do it to the day I die. <laughs> like you didn't do two Emmy speeches, you change your voice to the day I die. Where did that voice come from? <laughs> I've known Easy for 30 years, she never, never talked like this. It's too much pressure. All my friends are coming up with these deep ass speeches. <laughs> Cheryl Lee Rife, this is what a dream <laughs> looks like. Angela Bassett, it gets greater later. <laughs> and now Nisa did a day I die. <laughs> like literally, what do I come up with? I'm, I'm nominated, we nominated for a People's Choice Award. What do I get up there and say? I mean, thank you. Thank you. We were nominated for Emmy, so like, if, if I win something, what do I get up and, and say? All my life, I had to fight. <laughs> oh, had to fight. I done climbed up rough roads, and I done fell down many more. <laughs> ding, 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 da, da, ding, ding. <laughs> ding, 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 da, da, ding, ding. <laughs> but I, <laughs> and now, yeah, I'm gonna have to snatch my wig off. I done had to fight. <laughs> That's, that's where it's, that's where it's, that's all that's left is to snatch my wig off. <laughs> it ain't no more speech you can do. They done covered it all. But y'all, <laughs> and speaking of nominations, I, 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 congratulations, Nisi. Uh, I just wanted to remind y'all, The Sherry Show is nominated for a People's Choice Award. <laughs> We are nominated for daytime talk show. And today is a special day because it is turbo voting day, which means that your vote is counted twice. But it's only counted twice for today only. So go to Sherry Show TV on Instagram, or you can scan the QR code on your screen to cast your vote for the Sherry Show. So y'all open up your camera phones, hold it up to the code on your TV, then you press the link that pops up and you vote for Sherry. It's that simple. Y'all, you, your grandmothers, if you're not sure how to work that doggone <laughs> camera phone, ask your granddaughter, all right? <laughs> So you can vote, you can vote once a day now through Friday and then it's over. So uh, please go and vote for us. We're very excited. We're so excited. And y'all, we got a great show for you today because later on we are going behind the scenes of last night's Emmy Awards. And up next, Dancing with the Stars pros, Val Schmerkowski and Jenna Johnson are right here.
We'll be right back. competed on Dancing with the Stars, and I wouldn't have survived one day without my next guest. Now, not only is he an incredible dancer, but he's also kind, he's funny, and he's really sexy. And I could not have been happier when he fell in love with another dance pro. So please welcome my friends, Val Schmerkowski and Jenna Johnson. <laughs> seen you in so long. Yes. This was, and it, it, like, seeing you takes me back to my Dance with the Stars days. Um, and I don't know if you remember the nickname that you gave me when we would dance together. Uh, yes, I do. With so, so in my family, we add the chka when we want to show terms of endearment. So, sherichka was my... Sherichka. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Because you used to give it to me because Val was so, like, you were so hard on me. Like, you were so sweet. But Val was so hard. He'd be like, two, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight. And I would be crying, and he'd go, and he'd go, Sharichka. And that would make me feel so much better. <laughs> Listen, first of all, if you remember, this was 12 years ago. It was 12 like, years 12 ago. 12 years. I know. I, can't I was trying to prove myself. Huh? I was trying to prove myself on the show. Yeah, that's I, right. I didn't, I didn't think they were going to hire me back. So I was like, Sharichka. Let's get our counts, bro. Let's get our counts. And you did it, and we had a good time. And now, Jenna, I, you know this girl. You know I had a massive crush on Val. Who doesn't? I know. Let's you, be honest. You just can't help it. I mean, he's just so, he's so doggone gorgeous. He is. He is. And I'm so oh. glad. Look at it. Always. Oh. Oh. Now, let me tell you something. Now, Jenna, I don't know. Did he, for me, Val never had a shirt on. It was yeah. it, like when he when he came, you know, like walking around the house. Is he walking around with no shirt on? I mean, we're lucky if he has pants on that Ooh. day. You know what I mean? <laughs> so yeah, but honestly, if you look that gorgeous under there, why not show it off, right, babe? I'm, uh, I'm getting hot. <laughs> I'm getting hot inside the sweater. Now, you, you have to tell me this because I, you know, I know Val was always about wanting to be married and be in a relationship, even when I, when I would dance with him. Yeah. So how did he make the moves on you, girl? We have two different stories uh, when it comes to this, uh -huh. but I was 19 years old. Okay. I had just competed on So You Think You Can Dance. Right. And I got hired for Dancing with the Stars, and this was like my dream gig. Yes. So I'm the only new person that season. Mm -hmm. Everybody else kind of knew each other, you know, had relationships already. <laughs> I walk in my first day, and yeah. I am like shaking in my boots, and I'm like, oh my gosh. And we randomly got partnered together. The dream kept getting better and better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we got partnered together for this group dance. Yes. And I'm trying to be so professional, and okay. he's just like in my ear the whole time. He's like, in his little accent. It was like a bit more Brooklyn back then. It's yeah. been a couple of years, you know? He was like, you know you could bottle my sweat at source. I was like, what? He said I did not say that. He said you, you could bottle my you, sweat. You could, you could sell my sweat. It smells so good. I mean, he does smell very an, good. I had an entrepreneurial spirit. Yeah. I know your entrepreneurial spirit, but now like, you... I'm going to get fired. I'm going to get fired. You, you really <laughs> went up to Jenna and said, my sweat smells good. Well, she, first of all, she's leaving out the part where she commented on how sweaty I was in the first place. OK. And I said, you know, you know, said, I had to... You know, sweaty, not I like... Said, you're welcome. <laughs> And I tell you that you I mean, it works. It clearly. works. <laughs> how long have you been married now? We just... We're gonna celebrate five years. Yeah. Five years wow. now. Yeah. Yeah. This is so awesome. And congratulations, because you have a baby, baby boy, yeah. Rome. He's one year he old. He just turned one year old. one. Looks like a good combo of both of you. He also doesn't wear a shirt. No. He doesn't. He's learning like from father, like son. <laughs> now tell me, I say motherhood looks so beautiful on you. Look, look Thank at y'all with you. the smash the cake in the face picture. But like, I know. Tell me how parenthood is. It's honestly, I think from from when the first time we started dating, I think kids became 
a big part of our relationship and just yeah. talking about wanting to have kids together. Um, and I always knew that I wanted to be a mother. Yeah. Becoming a mother has been a dream come true. It really has. It is the hardest job ever, um, but it's so fulfilling, so rewarding. Okay. And I have this one as a daddy. I knew that he was going to be great, but to see him with our son, I mean, it's it's beyond. I thought I loved him, and oh. I love him. It's just, <laughs> I'm so lucky to to raise our son with him. He's he's the. Okay, so this is what I wanted to know. Like, okay, so you got music in the family because you play the violin, you play the guitar, you both are dancers. Yeah. So is Rome going to be a musician or a dancer, or president? Which which one? <laughs> What is he gonna be? Uh, uh, I just want him to be passionate about whatever he wants to yeah. do. Yeah. Val is really wants him to dance or be musical. <laughs> I mean, you know, none of my parents paved the way for, for this career. So right. I want to finally have a Nepo baby, you know? Like, yeah. if we have access, why not make it easier for him? Absolutely. But, uh, but the truth is, I just want him to be healthy and passionate, like she said, and whatever he does, I want him to do full heart and full but skin. Yeah. He did just start dancing. We put on this song specifically, and it comes on, and he just... He starts moving? Yes, and it's like a stone-cold face, which just moves a little bit, some grooves. It is the cutest thing in the world. Well, I love it, because when you talk about just having passion, uh, you have passion. Both of you guys are, are you know, defi uh, definitely Mirabal Trophy winners, but you just took home your third Mirabal Trophy vow. You were with Marvel star Sochi Gomez. And it's your third trophy, but it had been a number of years. Did you feel like uh, the curse was lifted for you? Yeah, yeah it's, it's been seven years since I've won, which was, you know, I'm, I'm getting up there. I told you, it's, yeah. it's been 12 years since we danced. 12 years. Uh, so it, it, it's been a testament to everything I've been through. And, and, you know, Jen and I have been runners up. Yeah. You know, now that we're, we're a family, I mean, her wins are, are my wins. Her right. losses are my losses. <laughs> and, uh, so she, she was runner-up two years in a row, and then I was runner-up last year, and we were placed in the same spot. On the mm. same side every time, getting second place, and I was like, this is a curse. <laughs> this side is a curse! So this year, they placed me on that same spot in the bottom two, and, uh, you know, this time we broke the curse, and we, we were lucky enough to win. You and Sochi were amazing watching both of you. And one thing I, I was so sad about, uh, we lost a legend, Lynn Goodman. Yeah. And you both choreographed a tribute to him. You know, dancing is such passion and emotion. Was, was it hard to do that dance? It was very overwhelming because, you know, the show reiterated how important this piece yeah. was and how do you take so many years of an icon and put it into a three-minute dance. Um, so I think it... We knew what we had to do, and so I think we were laser focused in the process. Yeah. But then once we performed it, I wish you could have been in that room and felt that energy. No one made a sound. Everyone was crying the whole yeah. time. And I think just we had the same purpose was to dedicate this to, to Len Goodman. And it, it turned out to be one of my favorite creations that we've ever done for sure on the show. So it was a really beautiful moment for Len us. Len Goodman was, so, was such a wonderful man. Uh, I remember when we danced and I did everything wrong in our Proud Mary <laughs> dance. But he said, he, he said everything was wrong, but you put the F in fun. Yeah. And that just lifted my spirits up so much. Cause I was like, can you tell it to Val? Cause I did everything <laughs> wrong. <laughs> But I, one thing that is exciting me, uh, you both are now on the Dancing with the Stars tour. Yes. So you're going everywhere. You got to tell us about this tour. It's incredible. Yeah, it's, it's... awesome. <laughs> I'm just watching myself dance. He's like, oh, dance. Dance. <laughs> like that. That I said, good. what are you looking at? <laughs> Don't it look it. like your sweat smells good? Look yeah. at that. Four years since we've done the Dancing with the Stars tour. Yeah. And you know, life's happened. I was pregnant, then we had our baby, so we've missed out. And to be back on the road performing for our fans live has been so awesome. And the fact that, you know, the show accommodated our family to do it together. Yes. Rome's on the road with us. He's sleeping on a tour bus. It's just wild. Oh my gosh. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, we had a moment this past week while performing, and I was backstage watching him, and I was just like, what is our life? I'm so grateful right now, you know? I'm Working mom, we're, we're doing it, we're making it happen, and, and this show really, it's, it's, I think, my favorite tour that I've been part of. Yeah. 
This is what I got to say about the tour. I remember going on, watching you when you're on tour before, 12, 13 years ago, and I said, and I watched you dance, Val, and it was so much energy. You, like, you got to go to the tour, because yes. the energy, it was so live, and I said, oh my gosh, if I ever do Dancing with the Stars, I want to dance with this man right here. And I got We'll be right back. Yo, yeah, I'm back with Val Shmerkovsky and Jenna Johnson, and it is time for our mystery dance off. Okay, so every week on Dancing <laughs> with the Stars, Val and Jenna prepare beautiful choreography inspired by different themes. So today, we're gonna find out who can create the best dance right on the spot. We're gonna each take turns picking an item out of the mystery box, and then we're gonna create a new dance inspired by that prop. So Jenna, my lady, you yes. are up first. Okay. So you have to pick a prop from the mystery box. Okay. So just find anything you would like. Okay, okay. What is this, a black and decker vacuum? All right. <laughs> so Jenna, you take center stage. Okay. Go center oh, stage. Oh, she knows how to use that. Oh. <laughs> You ready? Yeah. Hit the music. Right there. So Val, you're up. You gotta pick a prop from the mystery box. All right, let's see what she's gonna pick. Oh boy. All right. Okay, what is this? All right. Oh. This is a hammer. Okay. Now take center stage, Val, with oh, your no. hammer. You ready? Yes. Hit the music. It's my turn. What the heck is this? <laughs> this is what you're rolling. Oh my gosh. D don't give me 15, give me five seconds. Okay. <laughs> I'm ready. Go on, hit the music. <laughs> from the mystery box, Whoa. and we are all going to dance together. Yes. All right, I don't need, oh, oh, this looks good. A steering wheel. Here we go. Okay, so, all right, ready? Hit the music. so much for being here. And y'all, for more info on the Dancing with the Stars tour, you gotta go see it, it's amazing. Go to SherryShowTV.com and watch Dancing with the Stars streaming now on Disney. And up next, we're going behind the scenes of last night's Emmys. Don't miss it. <laughs> Real good, and I did better. <laughs> See what I mean? This is a package here. Will her. you be back next year if you get the invitation? I hope. No. I hope. No. I hope. <laughs> that was Anthony Anderson's mom reviewing his performance as last night's Emmy host. And Mama Doris did the unthinkable. She kept the Emmys from running long by scolding anyone whose speech took too much time. <laughs> So here to take us behind the scenes of TV's biggest night is extra senior correspondent Mona Kosarabdi. Yeah. Mona, hi. 
Beautiful lady. I got to say, last night was so full of humor and heart. Oh, my God. There were so many moments. Mama Doris was hilarious because everybody remembers their own mom, right? Yes. So you have these famous A-listers who are like, ooh, ooh, I got to wrap it up. Thank yes. you, Jesus. Thank you, my family. Got to go. Um, so it was really fun to see that. Um, but as you mentioned, right after that, after that opening monologue, you, then you had Christina Applegate come out. Yes. And in 2021, she announced that she's been diagnosed with MS, but she came out with so many self-deprecating jokes. It was so funny to hear her just yes. like remind you, first of all, that she's Kelly Bundy. Absolutely. Yes, because everybody remembers how much of an impact that character was. And then she, you know, laughed about getting a standing ovation. She yes. was like, oh, you guys are gonna stand? Like, yes. but it was just so funny to see her. And then obviously she was the one who gave uh, Quinta Brunson her award and was like, get your tush up here. That's what so, she said. Yes. I love that. Love and you. then um, as we were watching, like who were the biggest winners of the night? Succession, succession, succession. Yes. I mean, That's it had show. Right. 27 um, Emmy nominations. They took home six. Obviously, it's a show about, show about the Roy family, this wealthy family that owns this media entertainment conglomerate that, you know, after the patriarch of the family says he's going to step down, everybody's, like, trying to get into a power struggle. And so that um, was so cool to see because it was their farewell season as well. Yes. And then you had Beef, which is my personal favorite show. Yes. It is about two strangers that get into a road rage incident, and then they ruin their lives over it because they want... Vengeance, right? And yes. so we saw Ali Wong and Steven Yoon win. Um, they took home five awards. Wow. And then you had Bear. And Bear is obviously taking home so many awards. They took so many Golden Globes. They took home six awards as well, wow. with all three main characters getting their own awards. But then people were like, okay, we get it. Like, is there anyone else? Like, anyone else gonna get an Emmy? Because it was Bear, it was Succession, it was Beef. Those yes. three just kept getting called. At one point, I was like, they just need to, like, not sit down. Wrap it up, I'm telling you. <laughs> you know, it was funny because Quinta Brunson had told Extra uh, why the Martin reunion was her favorite. Y'all take a look. Martin, hands down, Martin raised me. There are videos of me at five years old uh, quoting Martin in my car seat. Um, and so Martin just means a lot to me. So I was actually watching that from backstage because I was about to present with Marla Gibbs, just having the time of my life. Oh wow. God. Now, what I, I and I, I agree with her. What else did Quentin did uh, Quentin say about that whole epic Martin reunion? Well, first she just got so emotional. Obviously, it was an emotional night for her. But when she saw uh, Tashina Arnold and Tisha Campbell, she was like, "Y'all are always gonna be Pam and Gina to me, Aww. as they will for us." Yes, absolutely. She said they are the reason she is here. Gave them all their flowers. She was like, "I wouldn't be here without you." And she was like, "I even showed my niece Martin the other day, because <laughs> you know you got to put the next generation on, right?" Absolutely. Um, and so she just talked about the impact that show had on her, and a lot of us at home too were like. You know, they may not have gotten Emmys, but and they went triple platinum in my household. Absolutely, right? in our <laughs> hearts. That's it. Now, I touched upon this earlier, but a huge musical icon made history last night. Y'all, Elton John Yay! is an EGOT. Yay! Oh my gosh. Which I had to check the records. I was like, is he not? Because I'm I sure that he it has. Was. He has so many probably a, a Grammys on Grammys, yes. but he finally became an EGOT for his uh, farewell from Dodger Stadium. It was like the last leg of his North American tour, that show. Yes. Um, and so he, he snagged an award. He wasn't there though. And so people were like, where, Elton, where are you? Why oh, not man. get your EGOT status confirmed? Um, he had knee surgery. Oh, so he couldn't make so it. So he couldn't make it, but his partner was like, he was screaming. <laughs> I was like, I, I can picture it. Elton John like, yes, that's me. Oh my <laughs> gosh. Don't go breaking my heart. Right. Love you. Oh. <laughs> But Mona, thank you so much for being here. Y'all yeah. be sure to watch Extra's full post Emmys coverage later today. Check your local listings and we'll be right back. <laughs> Jerry, we'll be right back. It's time for one last laugh. Today's laugh comes from a children's birthday party where the surprise guest made a less than incredible entrance. <laughs> Take a look. Dad got you 
and your friends the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> Childhood trauma. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the laugh. We'll be right back. <laughs> Jerry, we'll be right back. I want to congratulate our director of financial operations, Erica Denora, and her husband, Rich, for welcoming a beautiful baby girl, Angelica Lynn, last week. Welcome to the Sherry family. Angelica, we'll be right back. <laughs> Sherry, we'll be right back. Tomorrow, my Talk It Out panel will be here with comedians Yamanika Saunders, Tammy Pescatelli, and B Flat. So join us then for the best time in daytime. Bye. <laughs>